so so we have that and 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 we have the their the the wives with them because you know we're a firm believer and God puts two people together so that they would walk the walk the call of God in their lives and sometimes if God calls the husband the wife can't go no can't stand back and go no I'm not going well I guess she could but um, but in in in, in the Lord, God brings them both together, that they're co-laborers for the gospel. And so uh, this morning, uh, Pastor Ray's going to charge them, and then he's going to give a charge to them, and I'm going to give the charge to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is an exciting time in the life of our church. I uh, said to uh, Brother Joe this morning, I'm wearing my marrying, my burying, and ordaining suit. It all had to do with dying. When you get married, you have to die to yourself daily. And when you are in ministry, or called to ministry, you have to die to your own ambitions, your own desires, and your own plans, and fit in with God's plans. So this morning we are ordaining Robert Wilson as a pastor. As Brother Greg has said, he's uh, gone to our Bible school and has served here as a, as a, as a pastor and with the youth and so forth. And Brother Bob, Robert James Caridi. I remember when he first came here, got saved. Pastor Joe Jeremita, I may remember him. How could you forget him? Discipled Brother Joe, and I knew that he was going to be a pastor someday. Eventually, he would be a pastor. And God has done exciting and wonderful things in his life and his wife's life, and we are blessed to have them here in serving the Lord. So we're going to install him. That's a good word, Greg. We're going to install him as a pastoral intern. Intern. I was not ordained as a pastor, so I was a pastor for two years. So I don't know how long it's going to take you, Brother Bob. But uh, we don't ordain people here quickly. As Brother Joe said, we don't lay hands on people suddenly. They have to prove themselves in ministry. Not just because you go to Bible school you're ordained, but you have to prove yourself faithful in ministry. And when that happens... It'll happen with Brother Bob. He will be ordained. But he's being installed today, and Bob is being ordained. It's in John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And I want to charge uh, these precious couple this morning, first of all, to know the truth. And the way you're going to know the truth is to study God's word. As Paul says, to apply yourself diligently to the study of God's Word. And not to forget, have those private times of devotion and prayer with the Lord. Because sometimes pastors get so busy with the work of the Lord, they forget the Lord of the work. And we don't want to do that, but to, to know the truth. Second thing is to preach and teach the truth. It's very important to preach and teach the truth. I was... Uh, privilege to meet with a young man uh, this week sometime who had been called to this area. He'd only been in the area two, two months and already the people in the church are complaining. And sometimes people will complain about things they don't understand or don't, or don't realize is happening. So sometimes you'll be caught between the protests of people and the promises of God. I would advise you to hold on to the promises of God. So sanctify them thy word. Thy word is truth. But above all else, Live the truth. Live the truth. It's very important to live the truth. May your life be a life that is a, a character of Christ, that personal character of Christian living. But also, I believe in a part of that is to learning to work with other ministers and pastors and rejoice in somebody else's success in ministry. That's part of, of living the truth, to live a holy, holy life. And make time for your family. Very important to make time for your family, your wife, your children, your grandchildren. These are very important aspects of ministry. So I'm charging you to know the truth, to preach and teach the truth, but above all, to live the truth. And I want to share this scripture with the congregation and with you this morning from 2 Timothy. You will refer to Timothy, brother, brother Joe. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Beginning at verse 2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, 
Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. But you, be sober or serious in all things, endure hardness, do the work an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I pray that they may happen in your life. Do you receive and accept this charge today? If so, say, we do the Lord being our helper. God bless you. Pastor Greg. Praise God. I want to charge the congregation and family that are here this morning. Um, there's times when, when, when something begins and there's a road that you begin to, to travel down. And the call of God upon Bob and Carm's life and Bob and Becky's life is not something that they've tried to think about. It's not so, you know, everybody sometimes in their lives, maybe they might go and, and go to work for something and try it to see if it's okay. Ministry, you don't try. Ministry is something that you can't, it's an itch you can't scratch. When you're called to it, you can try to do anything, and sometimes we try to tell people, do anything. But, it, you know, but when you know that you're called, you're not going to be able to do anything else. So we as a church, we want to stand behind them and support them, encourage them not to discourage or criticize. We want to encourage them and we want to support them. I have news for you. I know them very well. They're not perfect. They're big, but they're not perfect. All right? It's kind of interesting that, you know, Pastor Ray always says, if you're going to have a problem in a church, you're going to have it in two areas. You're either going to have it in the worship team or the kitchen. I stay away from both. But in this, they're called. Now, ministry is something that when God puts it on your heart to do it, you can't run from it. And so God's put them in this place for such a time as this. So as a church family, we embrace them. As family, blood family this morning, uh, I appreciate family. The family of uh, Brother Bob Caridi, mom and, and, and brothers and, and sisters and kids and grandkids, uh, you got a great guy here, and we're blessed to have him with us, uh, and, he's, and, and that's, that's a God, God's hand upon his life. Uh, for Bob Wilson, for your, your mom and dad, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, you're, you're blessed. Your son's an, an awesome guy. With, uh, Father, we come to this holy moment in you, and even as this, as this oil pours over our dear brother, Lord, this morning, and as we ordain him into, that, into the ministry, that which he has been called to, Lord, Father God, we release your power upon him today in the name of Jesus. Yes. I release to you the gift of faith this morning and into your life to fulfill that which God has called you to. We release power, a double portion of the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life today in the name of Jesus. For I will lift 